Hello, hi. Um, so we are very privileged today to be hosting a concert and a Q&A with La Dama, uh, which is four amazing musicians representing music from all over Latin America. They hail from Venezuela, Colombia, Brazil, and Nueva York. Uh, and they bring it all together in an amazing way. They were recently featured in an NPR Tiny Desk concert. They have, they've had an illustrious career. Um, and I'm really looking forward to this show. Uh, the concert will be about an hour long, and then we're going to have a live Q&A uh, hosted with the, with the band members hosted by uh, our own Professor Patricia Vergara, who is a specialist uh, in Latin American music. Um, so I would just like to, yeah, let's just see what we've got. I am looking here to see if we have any questions in the the q a doesn't seem that we have many but i'm sure many will be coming soon i'm going to uh, take advantage of that and start asking you a few things myself could you tell us um uh, how each of you um um kind of walked this path like to where where uh, to the point where you met what were your musical upbringings, like your own individual backgrounds? Uh, how are you, everyone? I hope you're fine. Thank you for watching the video. We made with much love uh, for, all of, for all of you. So I'm going to talk about my, my background. So I'm from Recife. I'm from uh, a city from the northeast of Brazil uh, on the coast. And we have a culture very, very um you know full full of, of music of percussion that changes if you go from one city to the other you know you you have different approaches in music different rhythms um so since i was a little kid i started listening to a lot of music to bossa nova uh, my my parents used to 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 listen to that and i started playing guitar um influenced by 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 tom jobim by all the the great Brazilian musicians from the 60s, from the 70s, and, and so on. And then I fell in love with the percussion. Um, before that, I, I, I went to conservatory, to music schools. But when I, when I, I, I found percussion, I, uh, everything changed. My perspective in music changed uh, a little bit because I was driven by, by percussion. I started looking. Taped, uh, paying attention in the per percussionists around, all the, the percussion groups, uh, maracatu, which is a, a very important rhythm in, our, in, in my region, frevo, ciranda, coco, samba, that's known, uh, a very, very, very famous rhythm from Brazil. So all of that made, made, made me want to, to follow uh, the path of, of music and the path of education as well, not only uh, not only the performance part, but also, you know, communicating through music and changing through music. And I think that's a uh, thing that's that's really important to, to all of us, to, to, to all the ladies of La Dama. And I think, yeah, many, many things to talk, but this is like a little, <laughs> little thing to start. I can continue, uh, maybe since Lara mentioned percussion, I'm also, my name is Daniela, I'm from Bogota, Colombia, um, I'm also playing percussion in La Dama, and I would say that my path was lead the whole way uh, through percussion, to, through tambores, Afro-Caribbean drums from um, South America. Uh, I started to study music when I was six years old, I was going to a school where I was studying guitar a little bit, then singing and percussion, but by the age I was uh, 15 years old, um, I started studying cumbia, bullerengue, and Korean rhythms from the coast, and that was when I decided, like, I really wanted to go just uh, for percussion. At the beginning, it was because I was having fun. I was lucky enough to be part of a school where the educational approach was very didactic and to make you feel like you're playing a game, which has also impacted me as an educator today. Um, but I started playing cumbia and the way to learn these rhythms, although you can study at home or, you know, have a personal class with a tamborero, uh, the best way is to go 
to the territory. So I was traveling to the coast uh, for many years, visiting festivals and understanding that there's complexity and a string in this music because it represents resistance and resilience from African and indigenous communities, but it's about community. So I would say my path was connected by percussion and community, and it's the reason why I'm part of La Dama, because that's a common um, ground for us, I would say. Um, I, I'll follow that. I am Sarah. Uh, my name is Sarah Lucas, and I'm from, I live in New York City. Actually, um, three of us live in Brooklyn, and, including the bass player, so four. And um, I uh, grew up in St. Louis performing, uh, playing music my entire life. Uh, I sang in choirs. I grew up with jazz, blues, gospel, um, and uh, R&B. And, uh, but I was also classically trained on the guitar. And um, a lot of people may not know, but classical guitar repertoire, especially modern repertoire is, uh, it's like all South American and Cuban, like, it's Latin and it's Latin that um, it's like basically Latin classical music that's mixed with a lot of folkloric traditions and indigenous traditions and Afro rhythms. And so I um, was always interested in playing music from South America. Uh, so actually we all met in 2014 at a residency called One Beat that brings 25 musicians from around the world to compose music and create socially engaged projects. And that is where um, Maria had this idea of La Dama. And, but we all came together organically to, because we were all drawn to each other um, for these various reasons of how our different um, backgrounds overlapped and our desire to reach out and perform and play and compose music with each other. And so, yeah, Maria can finish. <laughs> Hi, my name is Maria Fernanda Gonzalez. Um, also, you can call me Mafer Bandola. I am from Barquisimeto, Venezuela, and I start um, in music learning cuatro, cuatro venezolano. And then um, at the age of eight years old, I start playing bandola llanera, which is the instrument that I introduce you in the videos. Um, this instrument um, is being this let's say like a good company during my whole career in music because i also went to learn violin I, I also was part of el sistema in venezuela for seven years this program of classical music um, where i learned how to read music and understand orchestras and understand how to be part of uh, something bigger than just playing the music um but this music that I learned or like, like that is connected with the bandola is learned by other traditions. So there is not like a specific school where you go to learn that music. So my background compared to what the rest of La Dama could um, be doing is because some of them study in institutions with their instruments. And in my case, I, I have to learn just following the, the masters in their context. So it's been like a interesting path to learn and um, create with this community context and also intercultural connections with La Dama. So um, it's, it's kind of part, part of my, my background and path with the music. Thank you all so much. I think that uh, you already responded to some of the questions that are in the chat, such as your what inspired you to become musicians. You all have already touched on that. Um, I think a lot of people want to know. So you already mentioned how you met, that you you met at the One Beat project. Could you just talk a little bit about that? Um, how how is this process? How did you end up there? And um, what 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 can you tell us a little bit more about what it is and 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 how you started the work together at, at this particular project? Um. One beat, we did that residency back in 2014. We were chosen to represent each of our countries. Very lucky to connect 
um, and in such a space where we were creating constantly with also 25 total musicians from different nationalities. So it wasn't only like our Brazilian, Venezuelan, uh, US and Colombian flavor sort of speaking, but there was also, you know, people from everywhere from different genera. So that was definitely a uh, very intense stimulation when it comes to how you create a song, how you create a project and how you go beyond your boundaries as an artist. It's not only your universe, but you can have like a bigger universe and the impact it's going to be as well uh, as big as your idea. Maria was the visionary. We clicked, we connect since the moment we met um, Lara, Maria and myself because we were speaking Spanish, because we were Latinas, there was just a natural uh, bond with us. We felt close. Uh, Sarita back then didn't speak Spanish, but she was very interested to learn and she also had a good connection with us and so, but we didn't, we, we had no idea that like Alma was going to be, become a thing. Um, it was important during this residency, the fact that we understand that we are ambassadors of our cultures and that when we play an instrument like Maria with her bandola, I play tambor alegre which means happy drum, it's my main instrument. Um, I'm an ambassador of this culture no matter where I go and that has an impact because we put uh, culture in the center of education. Um, so having those experience of creating songs, different musicians from all over the world, uh, beautiful people that you connect with um, and the opportunity and the spaces to record, we did our first song uh, it's called Confession. It's part of the first album. It was an idea that Maria had. She was talking to the moon. There was a full moon and I guess she was saying like the moon and her solitude and uh, it's connected to you as a woman and the moon is my shoulder and I'm uh, free to be the way I want to be even if it's alone, you know, that's also powerful. And she was having this idea in Spanish and I was, my role was to communicate between Maria and Sara because she didn't speak Spanish, but she wanted to sing the song and she did. So I was translating and Sara was like, oh, that's a powerful lyric. I love it. I'm going to sing it. So we did our first song during one beat. And we had the first moment to connect and to project this idea that Maria suggests. Uh, we, we said we should keep doing this. One beat is about giving free concerts, giving free workshops to communities, cultural exchange. And we said we had to do this in each of our countries. Um, and so we did. Two years later, we had the project starting and we visited each of our countries for at least two or four weeks. And we did free performances, free workshops. Um, but it was definitely, we're lucky to be part of that residency. I think we also put out a lot, a, lot, a lot of effort in our careers as women artists because each of us has like a 15 years of career in each of our countries and that was the reason why we were picked to be part of uh, one beat so it's also not also not only about luck but about effort a lot of discipline and a lot of um, trust between us that we have built since then I think yeah Thank you. So you literally met through song. Um, so can you tell us? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about as a group? How do you deal with the music industry? How wh wh who um, you do you do all the labor, all the the, the labor of uh, funding, uh, securing funding, promotion, producing, uh, marketing, booking? How do you deal with? with all of that? How, how did you launch uh, La Dama um, out there in the world and how do you maintain it and grow it? Well, after we met in 2014, we spent a year and a half uh, raising $75,000 through crowdfunding and grants to produce a four month tour of each of our countries and a total of four month tour. We spent, um, we divided that up among all of our countries giving free public performances and workshops. And um, after we did that, we, were, we had some money left over. We made our, we produced an EP, which we were able to use 
to uh, sell ourselves, <laughs> sell our music to a label, which then funded the rest of the album. Once we had that, um, we were able, all basically what happened is um, a lot of things fell in line. You know, once we made that EP, it showed that management would, it showed that, um, showed to the person who became our future manager that they, there was a future with us basically in the industry. And, um, and then once we finish the album, our booking agent come on board and then, you know, it all kind of falls into place. And so we do have a team now, but we did in the beginning do all of that ourselves. And we still continue to raise money for our records just because you have a label doesn't mean they're going to pay for it. We still do that. And we still drive um, the project completely. And in a way, our management is just like a part. They're kind of like partners in a way. They're not like in charge of us. Uh, management should never be that. And so they're wonderful people, wonderful, wonderful people. Um, it's hard to, I mean, I know we only have till 9.30, so I, like, that, that's a huge question, but I hope that that does answer uh, some things because a lot of folks, I'm sure, especially at university, I'm sure you can envision yourselves as independent artists, especially now, 20 years ago is different, but now there's a lot of opportunity for being an independent artist or driving your own uh, ship. Mm -hmm. And I imagine you're distributing in all the platforms. So do you also um, do that yourselves or you have any help with the distribution? Our distribution um, is partnered with our label and they do the distribution in all digital platforms. Yes. So that's all connected. Right. Excellent. So I will, there is a question here. Um, what do you feel when you play music? Do you feel focused? Do you feel relaxed? What can you tell um, aspiring musicians about this effective power of the music for for the musician for when you're playing and playing together yeah it's a, it's a big question because it depends i think and there's no <laughs> right answer or wrong answer but for me i feel like i disconnect a little bit from reality you know and i'm taken to to this place that's not here it's not anywhere it's like in you know we're just living the moment and it's really, really interesting and really, really good to have this space because, you know, our, our routine or every day we're always running, you are always try to, to fit a huge amount of activities, you know, in our day and all these things. But for me, when I'm on, st um, um, on stage, I'm, I'm just thinking about that. And I think it's really important to have, to have this, feel this feeling for me, you know, it's very, very fulfilling. I want to say one thing. I'm, I'm going to go out. I'm going to go out there uh, with this response. A lot of people talk about flow. And a lot of people talk about, you know, when you're when you're a musician, you you cultivate practice, right? Um, you don't just have an idea and then do that idea later. You cultivate practice. It's an act. There is um, conditioning and flow. And to reach that state that Lada is talking about in a way, you have to practice and condition yourself. That doesn't mean you have to be perfect. And be so out. comfortable with that, that you are able to go, right? Yeah, it's a lot yeah. like, I was an athlete. I think there's a lot of similarities between that. You know, when you're, cause some, cause a lot of people go, especially in the United States, like, we all kind of play athletics, a lot of us, and you have this experience where you're practicing so that when you're on the field playing soccer or something, you're just there, you're with it. You're in the, you know, you're, there's a flow, there's a rhythm to it. And that's very similar to performing and playing music because there's a present, there's, you have to be in the present moment a lot of times when you, I always actually when you perform music or when you're um, playing a sport. Um, and I'm going to take it even to a crazier place. Um, I recently 
had a baby and a lot of people put the fear of God in me about uh, labor. And that's something that you have to go through when you go through labor is you have to be present and you have to be in that moment and you have to practice being in that moment and like performing music and being like an athlete is what allowed me to like birth a child. I don't know how else to say it. And it's really profound experience. All of those things are really connected. Thank you. Well, we have only a few more minutes. Um, there are a couple of things that I wanted you to talk about, um, and I'm just going to to mention them, and then I'll let you just pick what you want to talk about. One, um, if you could tell us about um, how you see yourselves as musicians slash teachers, right, educators, and what are your goals with education? What 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 outcomes do you expect? To, to have as musicians and educators. And the other one I was really interested in knowing, and I know this is totally a different question, but um, when we briefly talked during Tech Check, you mentioned that your last album was recorded all in, in Rio and that uh, impacted the sound and the process a lot. So I was interested about the, the creative process. We didn't really have a chance to talk about it too much, but maybe uh, as you, talk a little bit about the making of this album. You can talk a little bit about your creative project. Okay, uh, creative process, sorry. Well, I would like to talk about the questions of how we perceive ourselves as educators and musicians. Um, as I said before, we have the connection with oral traditions. So we connect really good with storytelling and the way that we learn, the way that we teach or, or explain our process and the music is by storytelling most of the time. And I think it's important for us to share the culture around the music that we teach. We like to give context. We like to, to give an understanding of how is the people who play this music or how is the people who teach us how to play this music. And that's something that um, we share in some of the lessons that we have online in association with Teach Rock, that actually you can also go and look at these resources that are in the website. Um, but we have six, six lessons of different rhythm from South America. It's the first unit of lessons about South American rhythms with Teach Rock. So um, there is a way that you can see how we explain about the culture, about the people, about the rhythm, and the the out the outlook that we want from our process is like giving an understanding of diversity and the music and the culture and the people around that. So disconnecting the process of like music as like God, like goddess that play music. We wanted to always talk about how important is music for communities and how the music is made by the whole color, a whole smell, a whole thought, a whole, I don't know, routine of people who make this music. So in our process, of course, we have, we diversify our way of talking about stuff because we are a collective of four female from, or four musicians from four different countries that understand music differently, that um, also work as entrepreneurs. So we teach different workshops, but um, specifically talking about the, as educators in music is the way that we like to embrace the culture and the, the oral tradition that we carry with us. I don't know if that answered the question. Beautifully. And the other question is about? Um, I asked how was the process of recording your last album and uh, where you all went to Brazil, I believe Rio, is that right? And the whole album was recorded there. And I was wondering why this choice and how the how it, it impacted your your creative process and, and why this choice. Um, I want to make sure we do not end uh, before you telling us where to see you and maybe we, where to find your tour dates and, and all that great stuff. 
Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start talking a little bit about the the idea of going to Rio, and then maybe the ladies can give their impressions since I'm the Brazilian member. <laughs> but but I mean we 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 did the first record in the U.S. in in Pawtucket in in Rhode Island, and then we had this idea of what what if each record we record in a different country. We had this, and then at at the at the moment we were deciding all the details about the second record. We're we're looking for our producers to work with us. And we tried this, we tried that, it didn't work. And then we got to the name of Cassim, which is a very well-known produ producer from Brazil. He has worked with many great uh, art artists, Caetano Veloso, Gilberto Gil, I mean, many, many artists. Uh, in Brazil, and then we had a friend in common, so we connected to him, and in, it worked out. So we spent two two weeks in in Brazil, in in Botafogo neighbor neighborhood, uh, very very close to the studio. So we would spend literally the whole day in the studio, creating and finishing the the create the creations that we we had started previously, and. And it was really, really interesting because first, talking about the percussion side, we had many percussion instruments, you know, around. We had, uh, we had Cassine telling us stories from, you know, like Brazilian musicians and people he, he worked with. Uh, one day we met, Jorge Benjo came to the studio to record and then we were there. You know, we got to talk to him and to listen to his music, go to, to you know, to concerts. So uh, all the, the, the vibe helped us, you know, to get this, the, the Brazilian feeling a little bit. Some, some instruments, like I said, we used in, 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 our, in our record. Maria played cavaquinho, which is a string instrument from Brazil. Dani played repique it's an instrument from this from from samba as well so we all had uh our little moments with the the brazilian culture that were that were, yeah were around at the, at the point so it was really really special for me to bring the ladies to to brazil somehow i didn't bring but i mean <laughs> but it was really special maybe they they can talk more about their impressions uh, I feel being in Rio uh, helped us. We were doing the record. The songs are in our languages, Portuguese, Spanish, English, but the process of creation in the studio was in, speaking in Portuguese and the only one that is only fluent in Portuguese. We can, I speak Portuñol, Maria can speak a little bit more, but it was cool to have been in an environment where we don't speak Spanish or we don't speak English. It was what Lara was saying about visiting different countries, being exposed to that culture that you can feel through the whole record. And Kasim, it's a very special person. It was very, we were lucky to be able to work with him because he was very open to our approach for that second album, which was we want to experiment with new sounds, electronics, we want to integrate uh, new instruments. And we actually weren't really sure about that's the destination and that's the sound that we want to go for. But he was totally open. Um, I don't know, it's very good to have someone else that has a different vision of what you are or who we are in terms of sound. So I. Yeah, really big shout out to to Kasim because I we admire him as a person too, and that record and that trip to Brazil helped us to get where we are today. And it's hoping and trying to see the next album and how we wanted to create music and how we are evolving and changing and transforming and uh, we're in a different, more mature uh, stage. You know, post pandemic. Now living in New York City, most of us with Lara very close in Montreal. So I don't know, every single chapter has been very important. And Rio de Janeiro is just a very musical city and you feel the music outside just walking down the street. So it was a great experience. Well, I believe we are getting out of time here, which would 
like to add anything? I, I said that um, I would answer one question live. Um, what makes a great musician? Mm -hmm. I just think an openness and listening um, and just understanding that music is beyond genre and that people come and to music, musicians, people who played music before and people who've, and who haven't, anyone can play music, um, but everybody comes to it with their own ability to add something new to the conversation. And they come with, from their own context and spending the time to really understand what that means, I think can really just make something even more beautiful. Um, yeah, don't, don't, I think great musician doesn't judge too <laughs> and i think one one just adding to to what you said sara it's i think it's some sometimes people ask me how how do you manage to be a like only a musician you know it's like i think we have how uh, i i'm not sure how you say it. like we we need to find a way to diver to diversify what we do there's a phrase that you use sara i don't remember D diversify something yeah, I, just like diversifying skills and just using music yeah. as a way to reach out into the world to do everything else. Yeah, exactly. So as much as we can do with music, not only sometimes like just if you can play like multiple instruments, I mean, of course, this is one thing, but if you can like add that education to your, you know, like to your your world world and and play uh, shows play concerts you know and do like multiple things that, that's what I, I want to say like do multiple things more will come to you so it helps it, help, it helps when you diversify uh, what you do it's really important mm -hmm. and that's I think what what Ladama wants to do we want to to get bigger and bigger and bigger and reach different audiences through uh the workshops and the performances and everything mm -hmm. well thank you so much this is definitely working <laughs> um thank you lara and mafed and sara and daniela thank you so much thank you thank you so much thank you for having us yeah wonderful thank you yeah yes, thank you time in uh, our social media and Instagram Lama project, there's uh, concerts that we're going to make. We're going to be in New York at the Battery Park August 11, if you're in town or if you know people. And there's more shows coming, so just stay tuned in social media and listen to our music that's in every single platform. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Check out the chat, all the, <clears throat> the websites. Um, okay, thank you very, very much. Thank you.